Well, hello and welcome to a new edition of Into the Wilderness, as we are just a couple of days away from the long-awaited home opener, the Wilderness, playing host to the Minnesota Magicians, as we finally kick off the home schedule of the 2020-21 season. I'm Marty Hill, and joined by head coach John Valancourt. Uh, and uh, happy to have you along here, John. Uh, first of all, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Belated. But you got, uh, uh, got a, uh, hopefully you got a chance to enjoy a little bit of it yesterday. Sure, I mean, uh, obviously we had a normal day of practice and everything going on, but um, yeah, no, I had a nice chance to enjoy some quiet time with my wife, um, make a few phone calls to my relatives and um, do that. So it was, it was well spent time. Yeah, you know, and it's in this time, in this particular, uh, I guess what we can call pandemia age, uh, kind of difficult, I would guess, to be able to celebrate things like that. But uh Sounds like you did have a nice time to be able to actually enjoy some of it. Yeah, no, I mean, I have family all over the U.S. and uh, all over the world, actually, right now. So uh, it's always been hard as the years get older to be able to connect with everybody um, when we can. But luckily, technology, uh, FaceTime, Zoom, Google Meet makes it relatively easy. So I spent my decent amount of time yesterday just making phone calls, reconnecting with everybody, um, making a few people, and then... Uh, yeah, I know my niece has called and they sent me a video of uh, blowing out a cake, blowing out some candles. So that was very kind of them. Um, but it was good. It was good to be connected to the other one and uh, have those few moments. All right. And then uh, also got good news at uh, the end of last week where you were able to end the quarantine for the team. And after uh, after uh, a few people were were testing positive with uh, COVID-19. And uh, I'm just curious that, you know, you, 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 we've got a lot of these uh, uh, parameters and safeguards. Uh, in order to protect uh, the players, community, and that kind of thing from an outbreak. I was, I'm curious, because uh, I went on the trip to Minot, and there were all these uh, questionnaires that we had to answer that uh, Jarrett would send out. And what is the trigger as far as uh, when someone sits out? Is it uh, basically one symptom that they have, or is it a number of uh, repeated symptoms? Uh, how, do you, how do you make that determination? Well, if they show any kind of symptoms, obviously we do a questionnaire um every day so if they have any kind of symptoms they can't report um to the rank to be rest the rest of the group and they have to get tested um we did this through training camp and we had no positive uh cases through training camp but i think it's still good precaution to take um so i mean if there, anyone has symptoms they have to get tested um and then they're basically they can't be with the rest of the team until we get the results of that test um, and I think this protocol we're following with our own program um, has been rel relatively good. I mean, we had the one case after we played Kenai, but we've had no cases since then. Um, so obviously it works, but obviously because we're within that 48-hour period of all the players being near each other, um, we had to quarantine as a team. But, you know, we've been back in the ice now practicing for a week now. And uh, it's just part of, I think, you know, living in today's age as far as I need to share that not only are we trying to keep the community as safe as possible, but we're keeping our players and staff as safe as possible. Um, you know, including myself, like I, I get tested, it seems like every week now, um, just to make sure any guys that we bring to the program have to be tested before they can report here with the rest of the team. Um, so I think some people might think we're doing a little more than uh, is necessary, but when it comes to the safety of our community, our fans, um, our volunteers, our players and staff, I don't think you can ever do too much. You know, and yeah, and uh, obviously there's a lot at stake here. And uh, you, when you uh, when you tell the team, okay, we need you guys to to just hunker down for a couple of weeks here, you really got to make sure that these guys are are complying with this. Is it mainly an honors kind of system, or are there ways to check up on these guys working with billet parents and that kind of thing, or are you just kind of trusting that they're going to actually do this? Well, I mean, a little bit of both, like, you know, we've talked about before already that being part of a program means buying into our uh, COVID policy. So there is, you know, part of that is like honor based. Obviously, we expect them to be following through with the quarantine, following through with what we need them to do to make sure we have a season. Um, but yes, we, we contacted Bill S because we check up with Bill S to see how Bill is doing. Um, you know, through the whole quarantine, we did meetings. So we would always do a meeting first thing in the morning. Um, the guys had virtual workouts to do, and then we did a meeting or a team activity in the evening every day. So, you know, to me, like the biggest 
you know, obviously being quarantined, it was important for us to make sure um, everyone stayed healthy. But I thought the mental health part of it is extremely important too. So it was important for me that we did team activities, even though it was virtually, um, just to keep guys talking to each other, just to keep guys' spirits up. Because I think that's something that can sometimes go unseen. It's just the mental um, health part of it, just the struggle of these guys, you know, they're used to being social animals. So you want to kind of make sure they, they have the ability to do that but in the safest way possible. So uh, we did multiple meetings. I did individual meetings with players. I called players separately um, through the whole quarantine just to make sure that they were doing well or if they wanted to talk about something in their game or something systematic wise, we would do that. So it ended up being, um, it's not like we had two weeks off and we just, we shut down. I mean, we still did quite a bit with our team, but it was just making sure that our guys are, they're still learning the game as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, making sure that we're finally through with our quarantine. So that way, when we get back in the ice, we're ready to go and there's no uh, further cases. And there was supposed to be a, a you know, this this uh, addition is to preview the home opener, but there was supposed to be another game this week for you guys that was scheduled for tomorrow again in St. Cloud. Found out that that game uh, is going to be rescheduled after a positive test with the St. Cloud Norseman. Uh, but that's another whole part of this whole thing where you've got to kind of rely on your opponents to also uh, make sure that uh, everything goes well with them. And uh, that's the way this whole thing works. I guess you got to hand it to them. Uh, hats off to them for actually being proactive and making sure that uh, uh, nothing does get uh, spread to any other teams or the community uh, as a result of playing a game. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, um, we're all in this struggle together. So at the end of the day, it's going to take, you know, not just organizations or leagues. Um, it's going to take individuals making the right choices, kind of buying in to make sure we're all fighting this pandemic um, as a community, as a hockey community. Um, so, yeah, no, I, obviously they did the right thing there. Um, it's tough for us because we're really looking forward to playing them. Uh, we haven't a game here in a while. But at the same time, too, again, doing what's – in the best interest of the general public was the best interest of making sure everyone stays healthy and safe. I mean, there are things that are more important in life than hockey at the end of the day, um, which is sometimes hard for me to say because I am so embedded in this industry. Um, but no, I, I think that shows a lot of character in their end, making, being able to make that decision. Now this week, you guys have not uh, been able to, I guess uh, you, you're still busy, I guess. Uh, and there was a uh, news announced this week that uh, you had a, uh, a new player tendered uh, and this uh, player is expected to join the team next year. That's Sean O'Donnell uh, from the Pittsburgh Penguins elite. And uh, tell us about Sean, what, uh, what you like about him and, uh, and what we can expect from him when he does it, uh, eventually join the wilderness. Well, we love the way he plays the game. I think if, you know, first and foremost, we love his character. Um, and we do a lot of digging as far as making sure that we know the character of the players going to our program. Um, he comes from an extremely strong program, a program that's rich in uh, blue collar mentality hockey, which I love. And the way he plays the game is just hard. I mean, he plays fast is what, you know, we're kind of known for as being a fast team, but he plays the game hard, plays the game fast. You know, there's a reason he's a captain of that team. You know, he's a leader in everything he does. Um, I mean, he was playing this past weekend with a broken wrist, and he's still one of the hardest players to play against. Um, so we just love the way he plays the game. Uh, we love his character. We love his personality, his desire to want to learn, his desire to want to better himself and his teammates. And that's what we look for. Um, so we're really excited about the addition of him for, you know, possibly end of the season, next season, because we just love the way he plays the game. And we think he's a uh, – he just embodies the right personality, the right character, um, and the right playing style to be part of our program. And uh, how do you adjust your scouting and getting these tenders arranged for the next year in this COVID age? Is there? Uh, I'm sure there's got to be some adjustments that are being made for this. No, sure. We, we definitely do. But um, we have a fantastic group of scouts that work for our program. Um, work within a program that do a great job um, identifying talented players for us, getting to know players, um, you know, for us to connect. So, you know, obviously with everything going on, it's – I always go into a mindset that we'll be losing guys to college hockey to USHL, so I'll probably recruit a whole new team each year. That kind of just saves me some kind of mental anguish of trying to figure out who's going, who isn't going. Um, so we're just going out and trying to find the very best players and very best people, first and foremost. 
And that's kind of what we're doing when we go out committing our tenders, committing our affiliate players, who we look at for the draft. We're trying to find the very best people first, very best character individuals um, who are talented, who are ready to play at this level. And so, but our, our scouting staff, um, our director of scouting, Sean Fish, does a fantastic job with us as far as identifying these players, getting this communication going between us and the family. Um, and then we make that decision. So, and then I uh, wanted to bring up also another uh, new addition that will actually be joining the team for his first game, uh, I believe, on Saturday, uh, was uh, one of your selections in the supplemental draft, and that was Evan Bushy, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, was a standout player for Thief River Falls High School. Uh, last couple of seasons actually got into as many uh, enough games in the USHL where he actually you could actually consider it to be a a season where he wouldn't be a rookie going into this year. Uh, Ten games over the last couple of seasons each uh, playing in the USHL. Sioux Falls, Sioux City were the teams that he was with. Uh, so I um, looking forward to seeing him personally um, and a, a tremendous defensive talent. Um, what do you like about uh, Evan and uh, how he's going to help out our defensive core? Yeah, like you said there, I mean, he's a guy that has, I think, 24 games already played in the USHL. Um, standout defenseman at the high school level. I mean, we just, I mean, I love his personality, his desire to want to be better. Um, I think he just brings like a ton of like skill and ability, obviously, to the ice. You know, he's got great poise with the puck, um, can really do a nice job. He plays the pucks really well along the blue line. Um, but he just plays the game the right way as far as being good with his first pass, being able to support battles. Um, his compete level is excellent. So he just fits a lot of boxes as far as players we look for, especially defensemen. Um, you know, there's a reason he's on central scouting and he's committed because he knows how to play the game the right way. We're not the first people to identify that. Um, but, you know, he's here to continue to develop his game, continue to develop those good habits. But we're just ecstatic to see him on the ice, um, to bring his character and his performance to our team. I think it'd be a critical piece of our puzzle. And we have seen some guys that uh, have some uh, offensive ability from that blue line where yeah. we've got uh, uh, Mitchell Wolf, Joey Pierce, both of them uh, uh, have proven to be pretty strong from the blue line and, uh, and setting up chances, Grant Doctor, another one. So it's good to have it where you're going to look, looks like at least your top four defensemen there are going to have some pretty good uh, ability as far as uh, uh, getting uh, pucks to the net. Yeah, I mean, we really like our decor. Uh, we've got a lot of offensive ability, don't get me wrong, but we have a lot of guys that know how to play the game right um, defensively too and play the game hard. So, I mean, we don't teach like three fours in offensive zone, create offense, two D along the blue line. We create, we teach five players in offensive zone, five players in the D zone, um, five players transition. So we activate our D all over the ice. Um, you know, if you go back and look at the games against mine, not the chances we had and the shooting opportunities we have, sometimes our defensemen are leading the rush. So the, based on the way we teach the game here, the way I structure my systems, um, it really feeds into our defensemen being two-way defensemen and be able to play the game offensively. We need to have the niche in their game. Um, but with that being said, we just love the way how they play the game, you know, defensively as well. You know, you look at Stoinoff, who um, was central central scouting last year, six foot six defenseman. He's basically got like a 24-foot wingspan, I guess, when he puts his arms out. Um, but he just plays the game really well defensively. But you saw this year, he, he scored a goal already against Minot, so he's finding that offensive niche. Maybe it took him a little bit longer than some other guys. Um, but again, like teaching those guys how to play the game the right way, how to use the blue line, how to use guys around them, when to attack the net, when to jump into the rush, I think it's just a critical part of us, not only making our players successful this season, but successful for the future. And uh, let's look at uh, also a couple of veterans from last year. And I know these guys uh, seem to have, uh, um, they've got some, uh, a good friendship off the ice and that's being uh, carried over on the ice. And that's uh, Jake Herter and Mitch Allard. Both of them uh, put up some pretty good numbers against uh, uh, Minot in that opening weekend, which uh, is going on about a month now since uh, that, uh, that when you guys played those games, but uh, uh, Mitch with a couple of goals, Jake with three assists that weekend. So it's good to see uh, a couple of veterans off to a good start. Yeah. And again, I think that's just, you see two guys that play the game the right way. Um, obviously, you know, Hertz is a dream for Andy coach because you write something on the board, he's going to follow it to a T every time. Um, just an intelligent player that trays, plays really well in our structure. Mitch, you know, it, actually Mitch, billets with Herder, so it's funny you say that um, they spent a lot of time together obviously but Mitch just he's a kid that's you know came from Michigan um, plays hard nose style hockey like you see a lot of Michigan kids 
But um, he just plays the game the right way. Plays the game hard, stands up for his teammates. Um, he's a force. Every time he's on the ice, guys kind of notice him. So, I mean, those two have so much potential. And, you know, whether it's Herder's ability to make plays or shoot the puck and uh, Mitch's ability to use his body to get to the front of the net, they both bring um, key elements to our team that are just necessary for us to be successful. But especially with them playing together, I do think they have a little bit of, obviously, a connection after playing the season with each other and having that friendship. Um, and it's shown them to production already. I mean, they had, what, five or six points between the two of them in those two games. So, obviously, uh, it's a good connection that we'll keep using. Yeah, and, you know, and they, they both bring, you know, that uh, it's, it's a kind of style of play that you like to see where they're not afraid to really do anything in the game. You, you can kind of put them up to uh, – uh, they can play a physical uh, brand of hockey, especially uh, what we've seen from Mitch. Uh, and then to be able to add that, um, that offensive flair and actually put some points up is, uh, is a nice uh, uh, added bonus, uh, rounded out kind of uh, carry part of their game. No, definitely. And then I uh, wanted to also bring up uh, two guys that uh, came over from Latvia, the, the Twins, uh, Dominic's and Patrick's Mark and Kevix. Uh, Dominic's got the game winner for you in the overtime game in the uh, second game against Minot. And, uh, uh, you know, if you can get a situation where we'll, we'll finally be able to see these guys on the bigger ice sheet this weekend at home, and I, I would think that is something that should help their game coming from the European side of things. Yeah, no, definitely. I think they're both extremely skilled, um, have great pace. Um, you know, they, they know how to move the puck. Sometimes they get a little bit too much east-west hockey, which, you know, they – they have to make an adjustment in the North American style of hockey. We're playing North, North, South. Um, but no, I mean, they're both very talented players. There's no doubt about that. Um, they compete extremely hard. They want to be better. Um, I mean, we really, really like the way they play. We love their offensive ability. If you look at where they played last year, um, they did a fantastic job. I think they were fourth and fifth of that team for production. So have a great offensive tool set to them. Um, they're here to learn how to play a complete game. Obviously, it was played away the game the right way defensively. Um, but we love them. When they're playing the game hard and they're moving their feet, I mean, they're, they're difficult players to play against because they're so quick out there and they're so creative. And we just enjoy that brand of hockey. And then, you know, you got you to gotta be, I'm sure uh, there's got to be some thought as far as who you put as the center between those two. I you know Gunnar Thorson was the one you had there uh, in Minot and, uh, uh, and he ended up scoring a shorthanded goal and seemed, uh, what, what was your thoughts on how he performed and, and, and what, uh, and how it is that you figure out uh, who's going to actually be between those two? No, we put Gunner there because I think Gunner is a, def he's defensively responsible. Um, you look at what he did last year with his high school team. He's a player that just got better. He creates plays all over the ice. When he has the puck, he's able to create plays. He's also able to score goals when given chances. Um, but he plays the game hard. And, you know, I think when you have two more skilled end guys, you need that, that guy in the middle who can, can play the game hard, can be sturdy on the back end, maybe give those guys a little more time and space to use their creativity. Um, and he's just kind of been that piece. But, you know, no matter, we've got a lot of great players on our team that can fill in multiple different roles and multiple different positions. Um, but Gunner just creates plays all over the ice. He plays a 200-foot game, and he does it with a smile on his face, which is even all the better. Um, so we just love the way he plays the game. That's why we tendered him, and that's why he's been so successful so far. Yeah, and I I, um, I remember hearing stories about when uh, when Bobby Orr played, and the one uh, one big piece of advice that uh, one of his coaches, Don Cherry, would tell him would tell his line mates, "Don't be offside when Bobby has the puck." And it seemed like that might be something good to follow through when uh, the uh, Mark and Kevix twins have the puck. Uh, just make sure you're not offside when they get the puck into the zone. Sure. Yeah. Let them let them have. Once we gain the zone, let them do some offensive things in there. Um, support them and obviously hopefully they share the puck with you a little bit more too so uh this weekend uh saturday night we've got the home opener and uh set for 705 and that's against the minnesota magicians and uh, here's the details on the game here with the uh, doors opening at 5 30 and uh, uh 15 tickets and uh just some uh, so a chance to actually see this team and you've got a good team coming in here the magicians have uh came off of a very good season last year where they were in playoff position in the Midwest division. Uh, they've got two double digit goal scores from last season back. Also nine guys coming back from last year, last season with double digit points. And I'm sure with the, uh, them having a, uh, uh, 
brand new head coach playing uh, coaching in his first game, they're going to be anxious to uh, get a win in his first game. No, definitely. I think they're very, very good team. Uh, we know we played two expedition games against them already. And so we know they're a good team. I think one of one of those games, obviously. Um, they've got a lot of guys coming back who were the first year last year. And now they're coming back as veteran players. Um, a couple of them already committed. So I think they've got a really good group of guys coming back. Obviously with a new coach coming in, um, he's coaching a little different style than last year. But from what I've seen so far in video, um, and on paper, I mean, they're a good team. Every team in our league is a good team, and you can't take them lightly. But we're excited to actually get in the ice, play against them, um, let our guys kind of showcase their ability and let them see our brand of hockey for a change. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what uh, how everything works out. A lot of Minnesotans, again, on that roster, as they always do uh, with uh, the magicians out of Richfield, Stu Bickle, the brand-new head coach, former Minnesota Gopher, uh, leading that team. And there was one other thing I wanted to ask you because I understand since the last time we talked, you and Mara announced that you are expecting. And I wanted to ask you something here as far as what are the leading categories when considering a baby name? And I, I've got a four here on the, the screen. Family, historical figure, Maybe a wild card, unique name, or maybe a player who scores a big game winning goal. Maybe there's somebody on the team that might be in contention to be the name of um, the first child in the Valancourt family. What are, what, are the, what are these leading categories here, Coach? Boy, uh, if I named one of my children after one of our players, uh, they must be a heck of a human being. Um, you know, for, for me personally, a family comes first. Um, maybe historical figure after that, but it's family comes first. Obviously I, I'm, I'm part of a rich history with my French side, especially as well as my uh, Lithuanian side of my family. And Mara's got a rich culture of her own family. So that, that comes first, but you know, we've got a player that earns that opportunity then all the better. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, uh, just so you know, the last time we had a coach that uh, uh, where they gave birth during the, during the course of the season, we did make the playoffs. So we've got that history uh, backing us up there. So, um, and I, I was thinking of putting an E category in their team broadcaster, but I don't want to give you that kind of pressure here, coach. So we'll <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't need any more pressure right now. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, we're looking forward to, uh, to uh, everything working out well for you there. Hope, uh, hope and pray that uh, everything goes well for you in that, uh, uh, in the course of that. So, uh, again, it's 7.05 uh, Saturday night, uh, the uh, home opener, Wilderness taking on the Minnesota Magicians. And uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, you guys can bring for the first game of this season for 2021. 2020-21, long uh, after a, this long wait, we're finally going to be able to see a home game. Glad to have you along here, Coach. No, sounds good. Thank you again, Marty, for doing this. All right. Uh, thanks for having us along here, Coach, and uh, you take care. And, uh, again, uh, thanks for tuning in, folks, uh, for this edition of Into the Wilderness.